The SS Admiral was a prominent fixture for years on the St. Louis Riverfront and is remembered fondly in a new book. We'll have that story next on City Corner. Well, if you're of a certain age, you have very fond memories of the Admiral on the St. Louis Riverfront, as does our guest. I'd like to introduce right now Annie Amantea Bloom. She is the author of The Steamer Admiral and Streckfuss Streamers, A Personal View. Welcome to the program. Thank you. I'm really delighted to be here. You've got some great memories, as so many people do, of um, the Admiral. Would you begin by reading from your book? Of course. Many things obviously revive my memories of the Admiral. A trip to the riverfront, picture postcards, a news article, a chance meeting with a former co-worker. However, it is other less obvious reminders of the Admiral that have been my companions through the years. The smell of popcorn, an aroma of hot oil and the warmth of steam, the sound of a whistle, bread pudding, and even certain types of weather really push Admiral stories to the forefront of my memory as they seem to click into focus like a quick, clear photo slideshow. Let me begin sharing these memories with a wee bit of history and a tour of the boat as I remember it so well. Well, you have a lot of memories to share, that's for sure. Yes. And what I said in the beginning, Annie, about being of a certain age, if you're, I don't know, I think you've, you even mentioned in the book, if you're under 30, you, you may, this may all be new to you. Yes. Yeah, I would imagine you would have to be about 40 to remember it, even as a child, because my daughter is 33 and she has no, except as a casino. Right. And how long has that been gone? A few years at least, more than that, I guess. Probably about two years now, the casino, maybe a little less. Before we talk about uh, the great history of the Admiral and uh, what it meant to you, did you ever go back when it was a casino? And that had, I'm just guessing if you did, it probably wasn't a good experience. I didn't go back. By plan, I didn't go back. My husband went once and he came back and asked me questions like, was there a staircase in such and such a place? And questions like that, and I knew I didn't want to go back. <laughs> so. <laughs> Sometimes you don't want to mess up those good memories, Exactly. Right? Let's take a look at the first uh, picture from your book, and this is the, the ship itself, the Admiral, so that uh, people know what we're talking about. Most people, you know, I remember that as a child, always parked there right in front of the arch, right? Yes. Uh, well, parked, I should say, docked. Or, or tied up, you can yeah. say tied up, right there at the foot of Washington Avenue. What a beauty. And I mean, her, her design, her style was so different from the typical uh, riverboat. Was there anything that looked like it? Well, a long time ago, there was a, a boat on the West Coast um, that, that had those, those Art Deco features. It was a ferry boat, but that was before the Admiral. So we can't, I can't really prove that, that they drew uh, any ideas from that old boat. And you can't really tell from the picture there, but when you would see it by the arch, if you didn't know better, you'd think they were designed to be together because the exteriors looked alike. Was that just coincidence? That was coincidence. Although I think, you know, when the Admiral was built, she reflected the designs of the times, the, the, the trains, the, uh, even the, the features on, on buildings were that Art Deco, and so she mm -hmm. reflected that. And maybe Aero Saarinen also did. So who knows? Yes, exactly. Who knows? It seems like an odd coincidence. Oh, I know. Well, it all begins with, with a family, the Streckfuss family. They were, they were an immigrant family to St. Louis? From Germany, yes. They landed in, um, in uh, New Orleans. There they are, yes. They landed in New Orleans and then made their way up the river. Um, they, they, it was a historic family because they ran boats from the late 1800s on the Ohio and the Mississippi until the, 
well, about 1978. So it was historic in that way. And the other reason they were historic is because they brought music, the music of the day, to all of these small towns on the rivers. Because of the boat, you mean? Yes, they always carried live bands, and they, they played the music of the day. Well, that was, they were sort of carried on a tradition, weren't they? I mean, from the old paddle boats? Didn't they have music also? Or? Well, they may have, but, but Streckfuss really, you know, starting from the, I would say from, the early, from 1900 on, they made it a point of carrying live bands and playing the music of the day. They, they, were, they were really special because they saw ahead of the times. But the family, it started in a small way. Didn't they begin with just one boat and then it grew? Yes, definitely. The father um, was a merchant and we think that maybe he, he used boats to move goods around until finally he bought his first boat. Well, the story begins with you back 1962, have I got the year right? Yes. You were a young thing. <laughs> yes. And you yes. decided you wanted a job. Yes. My father and I had, um, we were very close. We walked or took the bus to the river. I loved the river. Decided that was the only way I wanted to earn some school money. My mother had a fit. She had ridden the Admiral, so she knew it was a good place to go, but not when her daughter wanted to get a job there. Oh, I remember reading the book, there's a reason why, because gamblers and women that hung out under street lights. And yes, things. exactly. <laughs> Isn't that how she put it? Yes, women under, painted women under the street lights. <laughs> she must have read Sandberg somewhere along the line. And <laughs> yes, and then my father took care of that by making an appointment with Captain Bill Carroll. Right. And we went from there. In fact, uh, the next picture we have from your book is you as a young woman. So I've gotten teased about that picture. That's oh, a great picture. I wanted a picture of Captain Curran, and I wanted it in that time. And also, this shows the pilot house. So uh, how long had you been in the boat at that time? That, was that your first year? Or? Oh, no, no. Captain Curran and I are about the same age. I would imagine this was like in 68. And didn't 69. you work, was it an almost 20 years or is 18, 18 years or something? 18 summers, yes. Isn't that incredible? <laughs> what sort of work did you do? I was a teacher, so I could go back in the summers. And then the, during the summers, I did payroll. Uh, on the boat? On the boat, yes. Went up and down the river with the boat because we had two offices on board. Well, doing payroll, weren't you stuck in some little office without a window? We had a nice window in there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We really did. It was an office, but if they needed help in the souvenir stand or up on the fourth deck, they would call me. I also helped to count money in the purser's office, uh -huh. so I got around. But did you, did you do that type of work during the cruises, or were you able to, you know, be a passenger on a cruise? No, no, I worked during the cruises. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, um, I never went on the Admiral myself, Aww. but. Um, my mom and dad grew up here, and I remember my mom in particular always talking about, she was born in 1930, so it had been, she, she graduated high school in 48, so that was oh, right wow. about the prime time, right? Yes, And I definitely. remember her always talking about uh, going down there and parties yeah. and dances and things like that. She came out in 1940, the boat did. Um, it was a wonderful place to go. It, in fact, people didn't even call it the Admiral a lot of times. It was just the boat, because everybody knew what you were talking about. So birthdays, graduations, important events. Were there other boats down on the riverfront during that time period? Do you remember? When I started in 62, there was only the Golden Rod. And that was it. Hmm. In 63 was when they started introducing what I call the little boats like the Huck Finn. Right. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about the history of the uh, Streckfuss family and the other boats. And, and it's kind of complicated. I think the Admiral, like many other boats, began as another boat and evolved into what it was, right? Yes. So let's look at this next picture, and I think this is a boat by the name of Freddie, and you can explain what this has to do with the family. Okay, this goes back into the late 1800s. This is the second boat that, that the Commodore, the head of the company, the, the man who started the company, Captain John, became known as the Commodore. And this was the second boat that he bought, the Freddie, from Calkey Shipyard. 
Doesn't look like much. No, it sure doesn't. And I think he only had it about two years and then sold it to the Corps of Engineers up there in um, the, the Tri-City area in Iowa. Let's go to the next one. Okay, then in 1900, 1901, um, he bought a series of four boats from the Diamond Joe line and they were all wooden hull boats. And, um, and this was one of them. And I believe the next one we have is the president, which may okay. ring a bell for some people. Now the president, yes, it should, because it did spend a little time in St. Louis back in the 40s and then again in the 80s. This was the first metal hull boat built from the steamer Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. um, and then they, they remade it into this boat, the first metal hull boat that the company owned. So uh, back to the Admiral then, what was the, uh, how did the Admiral begin? What was it originally? Okay, very interesting story. It was originally called the Albatross. <laughs> it's an odd name, I know. But apparently to sailors, the Albatross was a good bird because it went the furthest out to sea. So when you saw an albatross, you knew you were getting... But the meaning today of albatross would be something negative. Well, because of the poem, if you killed an albatross, you were in a lot of trouble. <laughs> and, and so we've always known um, an albatross is like a lemon. Right, right. Yeah. So um, anyway, Stratfus didn't name it albatross. She, the albatross was a... A boat, it was a ferry for trains, and I think that's so interesting because it took the place of a bridge. There were no train bridges in a certain area, and so they would get the, the trains across the river by boat. Hmm. And um, so then after the bridge, she worked at Vicksburg on the Mississippi. After the bridge was built there, the Admiral was just tied up and then was brought to the attention of Captain Joe Streckfuss, who went down, looked at her, and said, yes, she would make a good excursion. And boat. he ended up just putting a whole new top on the hull, I guess? Yes, they stripped it completely. It was all done in St. Louis, just north of the Eads Bridge. Stripped it completely and built a new boat. And, of course, what was so sensational about it is what, it was air-conditioned. Two decks were air-conditioned. That was sensational. Wow. We need to take a break, Annie, and we'll come back and talk more about uh, your great new book, the Steamer Admiral. We'll be back right after this. G morning, sunshine. Wakey, wakey. Text me. Are your parents home later? We can hang. L-U-V, love you. J-K. Holla back. Holla back. Holla back. <laughs> Are you with your friends? That's lame. We're in a huge fight right now. X-O. Would you dream of something I did? Are you on your way to the mall? I'm lonely. Nude pics. Send me some. Text me. is being accused of committing one of the largest investment frauds in the history of the United States. I guess we're not going to Aspen. That's fine. You see, I like tennis balls. He likes insider trading. So he's going to jail and I'm going to a shelter. And no, they're not the same thing. Shelters are for good pets that want to be adopted. Jails are for criminals. I've done nothing. Uh-oh. Okay, I stole a cheeseburger once on my dog. For those dealing with the struggles of caring for a loved one, we hear you. 
Visit aarp.org slash caregiving for advice and support. Over 13 million people are affected by famine, war, and drought in the Horn of Africa. Make a simple text donation of $10. But do more than donate. Forward the facts. Potter, welcome back to uh, City Corner. We're talking about the Steamer Admiral. It's a new book by our guest here today, Annie Amatea Bloom, who worked on the Admiral as a young woman for almost 20 years yes. and has written a book to, I guess, what just preserve the memory and your love of, of, of the Admiral? There are plenty of memories in it from my own experiences, but then there's history. And the history came from the Streckfuss papers, which are housed at the Mercantile Library on the campus of the University of Missouri, St. Louis. And we should say, since you bring it up, Mer uh, the Mercantile Library is responsible for publishing this book. It's a Mercantile Library book, self-published. Right, and you, it's yes. available at a lot of local bookstores as well. Oh, yes, right? the local bookstores in town and in Alton, and um, the independent bookstores and on Amazon. Uh, the, the Admiral, I guess, the maiden voyage was in 1940. 1940. What can you tell me about that? What do you know about that voyage? What I've read and researched, it, uh, it was a gala affair. When people walked on, the whole, uh, they, they were restrained to the very bow of the boat because they had hung like a curtain across, um, more or less covering the rest of the boat. And there were flower tributes. Um, and then Captain John Streckfuss, who was the first captain of the Admiral, uh, was there with his two nieces, no, three nieces, excuse me, and there were speeches, and after the speeches were over, the girls drew the curtain aside, <laughs> and people were able to, the guests were able to walk on and view the rest of the boat, listen to the music, dance, go on the top deck, whatever they wanted to do. And then there was a boat ride. So it was designed from the beginning, once a Streckfuss family purchased it and built the new boat on top of the, the existing hull, mm -hmm. it was always meant to, to be a party boat? Yes, an excursion boat, yes. And she always stayed in St. Louis, never went anyplace else. And how many runs, would it make run, one run a day, and where would it go? Normally it would go two. And the, there was a day trip and a night trip. The night trip, of course, was mostly for dancing, but they always carried live music no now, matter when. It was a big boat. Oh, yes, it could hold 4,000 people. Wow, and five decks, I think it was? Five decks. They advertised it as being a city block long. Wow. It was pretty long. Was it always yes. full? No, not always. <laughs> <laughs> no, not always. I mean, that's, that's a lot of excursions when you add them up. Oh, <laughs> yes, oh, yes. But there were some nights, especially Saturday nights, when we left people on the dock. Really? You know, yes. It's, it's uh, such a memory for uh, people that grew up with it. Oh. Because um, I've heard stories from people. Ron Ells is a, a, a mutual friend of ours, and uh, he talks about it too. You know, people met their uh, soulmates on that boat. Oh, or yes. Or got dumped on that boat. Or got, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> or they became engaged. Um, they, oh, I don't know, so many things. We even had a few people, adults, who jumped overboard, not very many, but it was mostly on a dare. No kidding. Yes. Wow. Yes. And some of those were, were retrieved and some, a few were lost. You mean they weren't suicides, they were just? Well, we don't know about those who weren't retrieved, who died because of course we couldn't question them. But those who survived, it was usually on a bet. Wow. I'm Are guessing we... alcohol was involved. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> One man said he, he had always wanted to swim the Mississippi. Wow, that's crazy. It is. Let's, it is. Let's take a look. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, when parents went on with children, you never worried about your children. They were so safe. It was contained. Uh -huh. And they, children knew better then. I mean, we just never had any trouble with children. Hmm. This is the book, The Steamer Admiral. Let's look at another picture. I think this is the souvenir stand. Yes. Where is that located and what do you remember about That's that? That's on the first deck, just as you entered the, the boat. And it was very close to my office, to the captain's office. So when that 
when that stand got busy, someone would open the door and yell, Annie, souvenirs. <laughs> and that was my, my clue. <laughs> what kind of things did they sell? Well, they had souvenirs, pocket knives, uh, little mirrors, picture frames, uh, spoon holders, any of those regular kind of souvenirs, and lots of hats. We have a shot next of the ballroom. Yes, when she was empty. Yes, it gives you the full idea of just how big she could, it could hold 2,000 people. And there's some pretty popular groups that played there. Oh, there's, yes. There's a fellow here in town, and maybe you can help me with it. It's just slipped my mind. He's a really well-known. Bob Cuban. That's that what I'm thinking of. That's what you're thinking of. Yeah. Yes. His band really brought them in, and he himself was such a personable person. I mean, he got to know the crew, remembered our names. Wonderful. Yeah, I've gotten to know him. He's quite a guy. Oh. And he's still active in playing. Yes, and, yes. And, that, and now we have a show of the fourth deck. What was the fourth deck? Fourth deck. Mostly food, um, soda stand, ice cream, steam table it was where the crew ate. Uh, there was waiter service, but all of the food came off of that fourth deck. We had some wonderful cooks. We really did. And you, you could sit there, and because the sides were open, uh, get a view of the passing scenery. And at night, there was another band on that deck. It's usually a rock and roll band. Okay, we mentioned a few of the decks, but just briefly, could you go through all five and, and what they were basically? Of course. The first deck had um, all that souvenir stand. There was some equipment, and, and some people will remember the arms. I'll call them arms, huge arms that moved back and forth in tandem with the machinery. Uh, one was named Popeye, and the other one... Boy, now I can't remember. <laughs> um, there was an ice cream stand there. And also, this was the deck that had all of the, uh, the uh, games. There were a lot of video games. Well, I say video. but Well, today we would say yeah. video. <laughs> arcade, Pinball yeah. machines, arcade games, yeah, yes. Right. The second and third deck, the ballroom and the mezzanine, those were the air-conditioned decks. And it was mostly dance floor but the mezzanine was a wonderful place to sit because you could look down on all of these people having a good time. The fourth deck was uh, mostly a food deck, although it was a good place to sit. The top deck was the fifth deck, completely open to the sky. And then on, as part of that top deck was the pilot house where um, you could go, well, not anybody, just anybody. It was for the people who steered the boat. Right. That must have been a view up there. Oh. You, you it mentioned was a your book, view. too. I think it's uh, worth noting that original, originally, if I understood right, the Admiral was segregated. Yes, in tune with the times. I, everything was, apparently, and I don't really remember this, but from hearing people talk, apparently, just about everything was segregated until the 60s, the early 60s. 62, in fact, was the first year because the city had passed a law that everybody had to be admitted to public places. So were you working there then, or is that about the time you started? I yes, guess? the year I started. It was the first year it was segregated, and also the first year that they paid the minimum wage, which was a dollar an hour. Is that what you paid? <laughs> yes. Did you think that was good at the time? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was the minimum wage. I mean, we thought that was great. One of the most amazing uh, features of the Admiral was <laughs> the women's restrooms. Yes. I think there were five, and what was really interesting there is they all four. had their own uh, unique design. Oh, yes. Theme, I guess. Theme. And each one had a name. Yes. They, when they... Um, Here's one here. Yeah, Glamour. Yes, this was supposed to resemble the dressing room of a movie star. It looks like I could see Joan Crawford in there. <laughs> yes, well, maybe. <laughs> um, yes, the designer that they had when they built the boat, uh, Maisie Krebs, was very active in, in the designs of the 40s. So she was really tuned into this Art Deco. We have a shot of another one. Yeah, that, I don't, oh, this was Greta, yes, named after Greta, Greta Garbo. Garbo. Yes, exactly. 
So, and I'm told that if you rode, you visited, and, and you were a woman, of course, <laughs> you visited every powder room. I've only seen the pictures, Amy. <laughs> Apparently, the men's room was really dismal in comparison. Yeah, I've never seen a picture of the men's room from the <laughs> no. Admiral. I don't know, understand that. <laughs> the book's really interesting because you go through a lot of the history yes. of the family and the boat and the other boats that were related to it that we talked about. You also have a glossary of names and terms, mm -hmm. and I just picked out a few that I wasn't familiar with. So this is like a test This then? is a test for you. <laughs> I, th I think you'll pass. One of, the, one of the things in the glossary is a packet. Packet, P-A-C-K-E-T. Yes, a packet boat was a boat that carried people and goods to certain destinations. So you could go from here to Alton, here to Wood River. I mean, you have to remember that these were in days when there were only horses. Two more quick ones. A stage? Sure. The stage was the... the, um, the the way you got on the boat. The gang The, the gangplank, the gang plank. Right. thank you. Uh -huh. Yes, that's what a lot of people would call it, the gangplank. And how about a Texas cabin? The Texas was the, for us, it was on the very top deck and it contained housing for officers. We have three more pictures from your book, Annie. Let's take a look at those. And now, I remember that one. One of the little boats, what we call the little boats. They were all metal and- um, That was the Mark Twain, I think. They did harbor cruises uh, to this day, except they're not owned, of course. They're owned by the city of St. Louis. But there are two small boats to this day. And I think we have a historic photo. <laughs> oh, some of our crew leaving the boat. Yes, yes. Uh, the carpenter, one of the uh, deckhands. Let's yeah. take a look at this last shot at Annie. In closing, just review what your time on the Admiral meant to you and what the boat means to us. Well, for us now, it's an iconic figure, a historical figure, and a, a representative of many, many pleasant times. To me, it was a growing up time. We left there with a few coins in our pocket every week and many good memories. Well, dollar an hour when many coins was. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> no. Hey, it's a great book full of fascinating pictures and explanations. Thank and you. Of course, Mercantile Libraries who did it. Um, and available at, I guess, most local bookstores in St. Louis and Alton. And also at Merck, at the Mercantile Library. Annie Bloom, thank you for sharing your memories of the Admiral with us. It's, it's been a pleasure. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you. For I'm me, Steve, too. I'm Steve Potter. That's all the time we have today on City Corner. We'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.